Today we're going to take a quick look at how to add physics to your physics bodies or your player nodes inside of a sprite kit game using your tap gestures. So whenever the user touches the screen or drags or anything like that, they'll apply a physics impulse to the character, allowing them to jump or move around in any kind of way that you want to. Once we open up Xcode, we will create a new project and click game. And here for game, we'll just we'll call this jump. Leave everything else the same. You want Swift and Sprite Kit. And then we'll just save it somewhere in progress. All right. So let's close this out. And we're going to go to our game scene. And we need to delete this label. So highlight it, click delete. And inside of our game scene, that Swift file, we're going to highlight everything inside of our did move and delete it. And we can actually delete this file as well, the action.sks. Now let's make this a little bit larger so you can see. And the first thing we're going to do is create a player node and a terrain node, both of which will be sk shape nodes. Inside of our did move function, we'll start building out our player. And actually first let's set the background color to be gray. And paste this. Instead of affected by gravity, we will add is dynamic and we'll set is dynamic to be true so that it can interact with physics in the scene. And let's set our player dot position equal to be init of We'll set it x of 0 and a y of 100. And last thing we have to do is add child. So we'll add our player to the scene. So if we run this, we should see that a black ball will just fall down in the middle of the screen and then it falls off. Can't do anything with it now. Now let's work with our terrain so that when the ball falls, it doesn't just fall out of the map, but it falls onto a little platform. So let's copy everything we have for our player and paste it. Click and hold and hold option. We can select all of these and change them to be terrain. Same thing with this. Change that to be terrain. We don't want this to be a circle. We'd rather have it be a rectangle. So let's call rect of. And the size is going to be the same size that we have up there. And we don't want our terrain to be affected by gravity, because if that's true, then it's going to fall right when the scene begins. So let's change that to false. And same thing with is dynamic. We want it to be a floating platform. We don't want it to be moved by gravity or any other objects in the scene. So set that to false. And for our position, let's set this to be just our frame dot height divided by four. Up here, let's create two variables for our start and our end touch. Now let's work with these inside of our touches began and touches ended. So we will call for touch and Xcode auto fills this for us. For touch and touches, start touch is equal to touch.location in self. Let's copy this and come down to touches ended. And we'll set this to be end touch is equal to touch location player dot physics body dot apply impulse which is once and we'll do a cg vector where our dx is going to be end touch dot x minus start touch dot x and end touch dot y minus start touch dot y So back up here, let's create four variables for our borders, the bottom, top, left, and right borders. And for each border, we're going to copy our terrain here. Again, hold option and highlight all of these, bottom border. And we're not gonna give them a stroke color or fill color, just gonna delete those. For our physics body, 
we want it to be a rectangle. So for the bottom one, it's going to be the width. It's going to be our frame uh, width. And the height we'll just set to 1. And then for the position, we want it to be at x of 0. And then minus frame.height minus 2. Got to change this to bottom border. And then we'll build out the top the left and the right border is the same way and all we're going to do is change the frame dot width and the height and the frame height position as well as the x position in each one of them Okay, now we have our borders, so let's run this and see what happens. Okay, we launch, you'll see we don't go out of bounds. No matter which way we launch and apply our impulse, we're never actually going to leave the screen. And if you wanted to zoom out just so you can see that border, let's add a quick camera node and we'll set the scale to 2 so it's zoomed out then we just add the child for the camera and set our scene.camera equal to camera to make sure that we see our physics bodies let's go to our game view controller tab and we'll set view dot show physics and that will show our physics bodies set it to be true. Let's run our project again. And now everything with a physics body has the blue outline. So you'll see we have our frame here and we can't leave our frame. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day.